place is fresh. I was cold, but I was warm inside. I have freedom and the air is clean, so I can see the world in me. I'm slow outside and steady inside. As energy blooms in the world around us, freedom flows through the air within us. The whisper from the whispering willows can get stuck in your pillows, but the wildlife watch your feet right now as you speak. I think that nature is the history of our planet, so that's why we have to protect it. Here and now, we have the perfect moment. Fantastic. Welcome, guys to this year's Force for Nature Festival. Let's hear it. <laughs> that is amazing. Put your hands up if you love trees. Who loves trees here? Who loves trees? Here we go, over here. Why do you love trees? Because they're a part of my life. They're a part of your life. What an amazing answer. Why do you love trees? Because without them, we wouldn't be here right now. Without them, we wouldn't be here right now? Wow, that's profound. Yes, they do so much for us, and it's time for us to give back, yeah? That's what Otis is doing, that's what trillion, three trillion, by the way, trees across the whole of the world are doing right now. They are helping us breathe, they're controlling our climate, they are doing amazing things, all for us. However, there is a climate change crisis, and we need to help them. There's even deforestation as well, where trees are being cut down. Millions, in fact, 15 billion a year. Yeah. Okay. There's three. There's four things that super young tree champions and anyone with a power of force for nature inside them can do. It is to connect with nature. It is to learn and be inspired by nature, and it is to care for. And finally, the most important thing you can all do is use your voice to speak up about nature and why it's important to you. And if we all do that every day of our lives, connect, learn, care and share, we will change this world forever. And we're going to have fun doing it too, yeah? Because life is about fun too. Speaking of fun, can you give a massive round of applause to Katie? You are going to hear a lot about the amazing things that you guys are doing because we have got outstanding beacon schools here. We're going to hear from one of them. That's Bishop Ullathorn. Round of applause for Bishop Ullathorn. <laughs> and then we're going to hand out some awards. So we're going to give out some beacon awards, outstanding beacon awards. We've had an amazing speaking up competition and we're going to announce the winners live. So we are going to give you all of that information. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening in schools and classrooms. Richard wants to go again, I think. And I'd like to give a big round of applause to Sarah. Would you like to come up and say thank you to everyone? Thank you, Sarah. Hi, everybody. My name's Sarah, and I'm part of Team Tree Council. I just want to say a few thank yous to some very important people who've made today possible. The first is Birmingham Botanic Gardens, where we are uh, now. They've hosted us all week, and they're hosting us here today. Secondly, over in this corner are Jane and Fiona from M&G, who are our incredible partners um, for the Young Tree Champions programme. Without them, none of us would be here. So I want you to do a huge hurrah and clap like crazy for M&G and for Jane and Fiona. <laughs> but actually, you and your teachers are the stars of the show today. It's absolutely fantastic to see so many of you here from all over the country, from way up north to way down south and all directions in between. I really feel that uh, the future is in good hands. So well done, thank you. Back to Richard. Thank you, Sarah. Big round of applause for Sarah, thank you. And um, we are now, we're going to go over to our, we've got, it's a festival of course, so we've got to have a tent and we've got to have a camp. It's the camp team. Give them a round of applause, guys. I'd like to introduce you all to, uh, to Otis. So, Harry, can you tell me what type of tree Otis is? Absolutely. 
Thank you. The mic. If you give me the mic. Thank you very much. Otis. Otis is an oak tree. This is Otis's big brother here, but this is Otis part one. And he's been around with the tree council all over the country on our project. And he's, um, he's still young. I think he's two years old, Otis. Two years old. So he's still a little baby. An English oak tree, but he's doing pretty well with himself. He's doing pretty well with himself. And at the end, we'll give him a lovely little send off for what he's up to next, because this is just the first of many, all right? This is the first exhibition of many, hopefully. We've got a lot ahead, and there'll be many more chances to get engaged, many more to meet Otis along the way. But um, next, I think, we're handing over to Richard, and we're handing over to Amy, our fellow young ambassador. So, hand over the mic. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for being here today. When I was asked to write this speech, I asked myself, why are trees so special? What is it about trees that entrances my imagination and care and thought and gives me this magnetic pull to be in their presence time after time? What can we learn from trees? And most importantly, what can we give back to trees? Lying on the forest floor, Petrichor filling my nostrils and the swirling scent of pheromones immersing my senses. The sound of a million whispers of new leaves and old alike. I look up and I see the fractal patterns of branches extending their twigs into the sky. The power of this piece to transform my mood is omnipotent. In fact, science has shown what indigenous people have known for thousands of years. The pheromones of soil and trees can boost our mood, and the patterns of the forest canopy can trigger the release of happy hormones, bathing us in this peace and tranquility. And not only do forests heal us, but they're this et eternal grocery store, supplying us with food, with warmth, and with shelter. Breathe in right now. Every other breath we take is filled with the oxygen that has traveled through a trillion living cells in the roots and trunks of leaves of trees around the world. In short, trees are our lifeline, and they have nurtured human existence. And we would think that we would give back to trees with our friendship. But unfortunately, as I lie here on this forest floor, I can hear the cries of trees around the world as their sisters are torn out of the earth and burnt to the ground, hacked by the machine monsters of anthropogenic profit-making. I am a voice for nature because I want to tell the tree's tale for those who are unable to hear it. Close your eyes. Listen. Can you hear it? The air is humming with the sound of change, with the premonitions of a world in which humans and trees coexist with harmony and compassion. The air is alive with the whisperings of a thousand, a million people who are ready to pave the way to a greener, kinder future for every being, big or small, tree or ant. Together, we can find another better way to live. Will you be a force for nature? It's the outstanding beacon time. Can we invite in our outstanding beacon school from locally here in the Birmingham area? In our continuous efforts to foster the harmonious coexistence of creatures around our school, our industrious students have been creating bird boxes for our resident feathered friends, as well as spacious hotels for our solitary bees. Ensuring the health and vitality of our trees is so important to us. Therefore, we take such great, great care, such great care of monitoring their well-being. Uh, 
Our commitment is more than just making a beautiful environment. By engaging in this project, we learn about the web of life and the importance of conservation. Mental health is extremely important, as if it is not catered for, it can affect our learning drastically. Mental health can be improved by going into the garden and the environment and watching the birds and insects go about their business. We've been fortunate enough to be joined by the Wildlife Trust um, in our Forest Schools program. The Forest Schools program helps students to help students to learn more about the often overlooked natural and nature and wildlife of our school site. It gives students the opportunity to experience a different type of learning where they're taught outside of the classroom about the issues in our local environment. At Bishop of Vaughan School, our love and appreciation for the world around us are deeply integrated into our cur curriculum. While subjects like science and geography naturally explore these themes, we believe fostering a deep connection throughout these various disciplines. One such example is our English curriculum, where we, where we just dedicate our entire half time to exploring our relations with the natural world. During this time, students delve into literature that celebrates nature and its importance in our lives. But our eco-curriculum don't stop there. Our year eight students in English have the opportunity and are given the task to write, to inform and persuade. The compelling leaflets that they create in those lessons are then transformed into speeches for the whole school to see so that older students, as well as younger, get a wider demographic on how to care for the environment. So on behalf of Bishop Ullathorne and all of our students, we'd like to encourage each of you to think about the small difference that you can make to the world. It doesn't have to be something grand, it doesn't have to be something loud, just something small. If each of us does something small, we can make a big difference between us. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's fantastic to be here and to celebrate all your achievements. These outstanding Beacon schools have um, delivered incredible projects which have uh, inspired the students and had a great impact on the wider community as well, from things like um, growing trees from seeds and recruiting local schools to join the Young Tree Champions programme. So congratulations to all of you. Katie's going to announce, I think, the winner. Rolf Church of England Primary School. Massive Woo! round of applause for Rolf. You can also see some of the amazing work that they're doing as they've got a table display over there to see some of the fantastic things they're getting up to. Thank you, Rolf. Shinfield St. Mary's Junior School. Would somebody like to come up and collect from Shinfield St. Mary's? Amazing. And our third beacon, outstanding beacon that we are awarding today, and that is Burlington Junior School in Bridlington. So a big round of applause for Burlington Junior School. They can hear it all the way in Bridlington. And whilst those people have been doing amazing things in those schools for quite a few years, we have got some schools that have come on board this year as Young Tree Champion Project Schools, and they have blown our socks off. They have done amazing things to connect, to learn, to care and to share. And as such, they are being awarded Beacon status today. They are becoming Beacon Schools. We have Selkirk High School in Scotland. We have Trinity Academy near Halifax. We have got Goldsmith Primary Academy from Walsall. We have got Awkward Primary School, we have got Pinkwell Primary School, we have got Bishop's Foxes School, we have got William Tarpit Primary School, we have got Wellfield School, we've got Bruffin Primary School, we've got English Martyr School and Sixth Form, we have got St Margaret Clitheroe, we have got St Peter's Catholic School, Great Clacton CV Junior School, Holland Park and North Fleet Technology College. Now, <laughs> Good afternoon everyone, so thank you very much, it's great to see so many people here this afternoon. Welcome to the Botanical Gardens and the Tree Council's fabulous event. I'm sorry I wasn't here at the very start to welcome everybody, but my name is James, James Jarvis, Head of the Education Department here at the Gardens, and so we welcome about 350 schools a year plus probably to the Gardens. So obviously it is great to see so many of you here this week, or today and this week, coming to do all the events with all the fabulous things that have been going on with the, the real tree that's here and the message tree that's over here and things like that. We've had fabulous events going on all week, so thank you very much to the Tree Counts for putting on such a great event as well. 
We have over about 600 trees on site, individual trees on site here at the garden. So obviously it's something we care passionately about as well. It's not just sort of pretty flowers. It is all different types of plants, all different types of trees that are so important to all of us. And I say it's brilliant that you guys are all here to see that and to sort of appreciate that and see how important that is. And it's wonderful to sort of see, just, just see Katie say how many new schools are coming on board and a beacon schools and everything as well. So I just want to say well done for all being here. It's really impressive. I was particularly impressed with the sort of speakers that were up just before me as well. So I hope you all have a great afternoon and evening. So thank you very much, everyone. So enjoy your afternoon. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, James. So I'm going to pass over to Harry and Neve, our ambassadors, and Amy. Got a few questions for our Amy, Mr. Tree Doctor. Hello, Dr. Tree. Can I ask you a few questions about trees, please? You certainly can. I've heard that our trees are in danger. They and are. can you tell me three things that are, are challenges that trees face in today, today's world? Now, the top one, I think you might all be able to guess. And unfortunately, it's human beings. And the reason for that is that not everybody is aware of what the value of trees are. And not everybody knows how they should treat trees. So that is our top challenge. But the second challenge is one which is caused by some, another factor, but it's disease. Now, you may all be aware of different diseases that we've been getting, like ash dieback or something that Otis Senior here will have, uh, may suffer from or might, might be actually a bit scared about, which is oak processionary moth. So making sure our trees are happy, making sure that we know what the value of those trees are. That's the challenge. I do have some props. If anybody wants to talk to me, I could tell you a little bit about what it is to be a tree doctor, and I'd love to tell you a little bit more, but I'll hand it back to the team. Big round of applause for Dr. Turner. The legend continues. Here we go. This is the sensory challenge. I'm going to pass over to Harry and Neve. Harry, here you go. All right. So the sensory challenge. The sensory challenge. So. We've got a picture of a tree up there. What we want both of you to do is to identify it. What type of tree do you think that is? English oak. Yeah. English yeah. oak. <laughs> Woo! Good job, Adele. So there we go. Yeah, that was the English oak. Harry, could you put those glasses on, Mr. Mr. Knight? Okay, we're taking away their sense of sight. So things get a little bit harder now. The next sense is to hear, to hear. Okay, guys, I'd like you now to make the sound of trees blowing in the wind. Can we do that nice and loud? The sound of trees blowing in the wind. This is really difficult. That's lovely. That is lovely. What tree is this tree that you are hearing now from our audience? What tree is this tree? What could it be? A pine tree. It is a pine tree. Well done. Very good. Very good indeed. Brilliant. It is a pine tree. What is it in the hands? What is it? What can you feel? Got any ideas? Apple, I guess. It is. It is an apple. Well done. Big round of applause to Mr. Knight over here. Very good. Okay. okay, so they, now they can't hear, they can't see, and they can't feel. It gets harder. The next sense. It's the sense of smell. Hands in the air if you think you know. Oh, let's go to Adele. Eucalyptus. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Eucalyptus, very good. Very good indeed. Guys, I've got a question for you. Can you raise your massive hand if you can tell me three senses that trees have? Hearing? I, I don't know. Okay, that's one. Uh, sight? Sight, that's two. Hearing and sight, yeah. There's another. What you got? What you got? Think of a sense. Taste? Yes, big round of applause. <laughs> well done, well done. Okay, big round of applause for our two contestants, Adele and Mr. Knight.
Very good. Okay, we now move on to Speaking Up for Trees and Nature. So this is our national competition, Speaking Up for Trees and Nature, and we have entries from all over the UK. So our first winner for the ambassador category, because this person is a junior ambassador with the Young Tree Champions, it is the amazing Jana from Rosebog Primary School. A massive round of applause for Jana, please. <laughs> Jana Oye Deji here. I have a few things to say about why nature is important in every possible way. Today, I'm going to express myself in my nature story rap. And please, while you're listening, don't get captured in a nap. Have you ever experienced a moment in nature that changed your life? Hang about. This rap has a message, without a doubt. It was a dazzling day, and it was playtime. I was playing with my friends in the sparkling sunshine. We were exploring the bushes, was playing a game, when my strong love for nature finally came. I looked around, I saw sticks and branches. I felt grateful for nature and the world it enhances. I also felt annoyed at other parts of the earth who always misunderstand nature's value and worth. From then on, I started to do my best to care for nature. I ended up moving school, but that just made it easier. I started working with my forest school. Teachers started planting more. She became a genie tree and buster. And forever writing poems and raps about nature to encourage you to change the world faster. I'm not just born to be a poet. I'm not just born to be a rapper. I'm here to change the world. I'm here to make life better. Thank you. Now, our second winner, unfortunately, is not with us today, but will be watching, I know, in school. So we have got a recording of the amazing Rua from Pinkwell Primary School, who is our lower key stage two winner. Raise your hand if you're tired of deforestation and you want to do more about it. I'm speaking about this because our rainforests are running out more and more every day, and soon we will have no trees left. Do you want that? This should matter to everyone because without trees, I wouldn't be here right now. In fact, no one would be here right now. So join me and be a force for nature. Did you know that 15 billion trees get cut down every day? So today, my message to you is stand up for your trees, help them grow into a larger amount, stop deforestation and help bring happiness and joy. Thank you. Amazing, Rua. I know you're watching this. So fantastic work at Pinkwell. Well done. Preston from Rosebrook Primary School. Hi, my name is Preston, and I would like to tell you about a wonderful ecosystem. Our world is filled with amazing plant life, but now it's slowly fading away because of deforestation. It hurts me to know that every day trees die, but what for? Trees are the main reason we live, because they turn carbon dioxide, CO2, into oxygen. This process is called photosynthesis. But as a byproduct of that chemical reaction, oxygen is produced and released by the tree. I love nature and the freedom it provides. For example, when you navigate your way through a forest, many wonderful sounds can be heard. Beautiful birds chirping, rustling leaves, falling conkers, the list goes on. So, have you ever walked through a meadow and felt free? And if we don't take action now, many years later, humans may go extinct. So, it's time to save trees. It's time to put a stop to deforestation. It's time to help the future, not later, now. This is my saying to you, put away, put away the weapons and enjoy what you once tried very hard to destroy. Our secondary winner has also travelled a long way to be with us today, and we have Kian from Oasis Media Academy in Salford. Well done, Kian! Come on up, massive round of applause for Kian! Well done, Kian! Pop it on, Kian! Go on, where it was tried. Imagine smog so thick that you can't see your feet as you walk through it. It stings your eyes and burns your lungs. Well, there's so much pollution in the air now. 
that it if it weren't for how long because there'll be no place to put it all. It's shocking. By the time I finish this speech, more than 3,000 trees will be cut down. We are humans. We don't like change, but we need change. There is no future with air pollution. Like Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. My dream is to make our world green and clean. We need to make this reality. I will not give up till I try to make this happen. Pollution is a serious, major and more and it affects us all, causing illnesses such as asthma, lung disease and even cancer. It's up to each and every one of us to take action so we can make a difference. We must work together to raise awareness about this issue and to encourage others to take action. We need to protect our national parks. We need to create flowers in our gardens and plant trees in cities. We can create a cleaner, healthier, more sustainable world for ourselves, nature and future generations. As I come back and say this, there is no future with pollution. So what are we waiting for? Let's give back to the earth. We should respect what was created. And if you want to breathe clean, you have to go green. Let's say yes to change, yes to a greener planet and say no to pollution. Thank you for taking time to listen to me. And remember, kill pollution or it will kill you. A massive round of applause for Kia. A massive round of applause. We have one ultimate winner from the last three years competition. This person is amazing. And I'd just like to give a massive round of applause to Mel. Would you like to come up? Up you come. Big round of applause, everyone. Trees are one of, if not the most important part of our ecosystem. They are the longest living organisms on Earth, with some living up to 5,000 years. But loggers are chopping down these precious plants. If you want to know how many, a whole football pitch of trees are cut down every single second, which means that every year, an average of, um, which means every minute, an average of 2,400 trees are cut down. And to scale it up, 15 billion trees are cut down every single year. However, if every human planted just two trees annually, we will reverse the imbalance. Now, you may also be aware of the carbon crisis, and today, levels are higher than ever before. Well, guess what? In a process called photosynthesis, trees take in the carbon and turn it into oxygen, which is what us humans and all other animals on the planet need. This major rise in carbon dioxide contributes to the warming of our climate, therefore increasing risks of forest fires. This destroys habitats, causing many animals to suffer and pushing endangered species to the brink of extinction. Koalas, pandas, orangutans and many more animals are victims of this. Unfortunately, 137 species of plant, insect and animal are lost each day due to deforestation. Think about what life would be like today if we didn't have trees. No pencils and paper to write with, no wrapping for our presents. Trees purify the air that we breathe in and help fertilise the soil that we plant our crops in and the ancestors of humans actually lived in trees. This breaks my heart to think about how much we take trees for granted, but not all hope is lost. I'm not just here to recite a speech, I'm here to make a difference. A single seed can go a long way, and with the Young Tree Champions, you can plant one small tree that makes a big difference. Just go to youngtreechampions.org to be a force for nature. Thank you. Legend. <laughs> amazing. Absolutely amazing.
everyone, the critically acclaimed Rachel Gadsden. If you can give her a round of applause, everyone.
I'm far from where I was, and I've been thought he's going for revenge and be on God's name. It was the rose, I'm far from being harmless, but inflections of the darkness, and we go past them, we go godless. I'm losing serotonin, these new riches, been slow, and as I'm leaving, it's slow, and I'm losing this approach, and it's sad to keep on folding, just trying to leave it home, and I'm off. and steady inside as energy blooms in the world around us freedom flows through the air within us the whisper from the whispering willows can get stuck in your pillows but the wildlife watch your feet right now as you speak i think that nature is the history of our planet so that's why we have to protect it here and now we're at the perfect moment in time to all the leaders in the world, you need to do something. Because if you don't, then all we have now won't be here. Imagine the future where the last tree disappears. Our future hangs in the balance. It's scary how our kids will grow up not being able to see the world how we see it today.
Ever since a child I've been fascinated by the wonder of trees Their root system and their complexity that functions for me The mycorrhizal network, a subterranean feed A forest communicated under the ground beneath our feet Tree scapes that can elate us, look around and you'll all see These extraordinary organisms that produce the air that we breathe So pivotal for the animals and insects that inhabit They're the home to more wildlife than any other landscape on this planet A seed planted in the ground will grow to captivate and nourish Cultivating life so that every living thing can flourish Carbon sequestration for every nation on this earth Trees capture CO2 and air pollution that's dispersed Biodiversity flourishes the more trees would only serve And protect against the floods and call our cities let's preserve And change the narrative to a positive togetherness and curve Humanity can breathe again for our futures in these words To all who are listening, you've heard our voices. Now we need your voice. Be the voice for nature.